I know you probably can't hear me, but it's a little crazy in here. It's kind of loud, it's kind of ridiculous. I'm here. So last Thursday, I went to Comic-Con. It was the first time I'd ever gone. It was really cool, it was really crowded, it was a little overwhelming, and I saw a lot of really cool stuff. As you can see, I tried to vlog it for you. I thought you would enjoy seeing it. I thought you would enjoy hearing me talk about it. It was too loud. That's okay though. I can still walk you through it with the video that I did get. As you can see, there's some really awesome cosplay happening and it's only Thursday. The cosplay competition wasn't until Saturday. So I'm standing here by the black sails and I'm walking towards uh, the WB stand and the Walking Dead stand. But let me take you back to how I started my day. Okay, so here's the line. As you can see, we're out on Harbor Drive out by the piers. Can't even see the convention center, but I do have, you know, shade, so that's awesome. So here we are, and I will be back when we start moving. Bye. So as you can tell, I definitely thought I was going to be able to vlog the whole day, and it just didn't happen. Things were too crazy, things were too crowded, things were too loud. I was in that line an hour and a half and didn't get into my signing. Oh, there's a Hellboy. Totally a Hellboy. So I'm going to walk you through my day. Um, I went to the Weta booth. That was awesome. I got to see props from The Hobbit. I got to see Evangeline Lilly signing autographs. And then I found the BBC booth with, you know, stuff. Look at that. Can I just say, look look at that. That is the Tom Baker scarf. And, and that is William Hartnell's costume and Matt Smith's costume. That is the Doctor stuff. The real, actual Doctor stuff right there, okay? So I did end up going to a signing. I went to the Annoying Orange signing. I got to meet Toby Turner, as you can see right here, and I got to meet I Justine, and they were so awesome. They were so nice. Everybody was so nice. But then I turned around and on a stage a little further down, there's Matt Smith. So this happened. Um, I was not expecting to see Matt Smith because I wasn't going to any of the panels because they were ridiculously crowded, but he randomly came out for an interview, and it turned out he'd been wearing a really bad mask, and I'd been standing beside him for a really long time, so that was awesome. I went to the Geek and Sundry Hangout, the lounge where they had tabletop games and computer games and wound up seeing the Rock Jocks trailer and I was sitting kind of behind the cast as you can see, but that's Felicia Day in that awesome dress right there and got to meet some of the cast and crew afterwards and again, everyone was so nice. That was the thing that I kept noticing about Comic-Con, everyone was nice, which was awesome because I made friends everywhere I went. I never was alone. Here are some of my favorite photos from the day with some different cosplayers and things like that. I rounded out the night at Wootstock, a comedy concert hosted by Paul and Storm, Will Wheaton, and Adam Savage from Mythbusters. A whole bunch of other really awesome people came, and it was a whole lot of fun. I don't think I've laughed so hard in my whole life. I figured you would appreciate getting a small taste of it, so in just a minute you're going to get to see some clips. I will explain what's happening. Um, the first thing you'll see is Grant Imahara doing an introduction, then you'll see Molly Lewis, you will see Adam Savage sing, and then you will see some really great cameos. Well, and bad friend. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so new it doesn't have an intro. Here we go. So there we are at the cafe drinking lemonade. We're swapping anecdotes about our lives I set the scene that in the background I was watching how it's made And at the mention, I can see you roll your eyes I stop my story and I ask if you have seen the show I ask you why your eyes roll back into your skull You say you never watch TV, but that even so That you can't stand the thing, you say that it's too dull It's okay, it happens to everyone, it's perfectly normal. Yeah. <laughs> After 15 months at sea, the captain hit the tavern with his crew of 53. 
That's it. Give me an R. R. What's that spell? Pirate SETs, not be very difficult. <laughs> Can't argue with that logic. <laughs> it is a far better action. <laughs> We're pirates. <laughs> are you reminding Paul of where we are? It's pirates on board. Pirates on board. Pirates on board. Pirates on board. Pirates on Shit, yeah. Crew of 53! <laughs> After drinking up their pay, they staggered through the town. You know, the thing about being a pirate... <laughs> Shh. I have to, I want to say it's important. The thing with this song is it goes on and on and on. I think this rendition lasted about half an hour. It was the finale. But the thing I'm going to leave you with is actually the opening of the show. What you need to know is that Paul and Storm are musicians, and one of their most well-known songs is one in which they talk quite a bit about George R. R. Martin and Game of Thrones. Here you go. The day that my friend never told me An old dog-eared paperback called Game of Thrones How could I know that this seed would grow into an addiction that ever did from George R. R. Martin is what? I can't hear you. He's not our bitch. Yeah, that was totally Neil Gaiman schooling them after George R. R. Martin smashed the guitar. You're welcome, Internet. I thought you'd like that, too.